You're listening to CIUT 89.5 FM. This is Donna G. And joining me finally by telephone is Naomi Wright to talk about the uh, the play, the series of monologues, rather, Talking Heads, which is being presented at the historic Campbell House right here in Toronto. And uh, Naomi, welcome to CIUT. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. It's so great to finally connect. Yeah. <laughs> So, Talking Heads is a series of monologues um, by uh, Alan Bennett, um, who is very, very uh, famous, especially in England, for his work. And uh, he's teamed with uh, wonderful actresses like Maggie Smith, Patricia Rutledge, uh, Julie Walters, to to name just a few. So, how That's is right. it um, working um, with John Shooter on this uh, this play? Um, it's a fantastic experience. I mean, Alan Bennett is a real master of uh, the written word and his character um, portraits are so complete and complex and um, authentic that it's, it's a real joy as an actor to be able to step into such a clearly drawn per, uh, portrait of someone. And he also is a very, um, he's a very truthful writer and a very um, yeah, authentic writer. So each of the characters that are presented are so um, they're flawed and they're so real and it's been really great working with John trying to really sort of root out the truth in all of these characters so yeah it's been a real joy so let's introduce you to our listeners because I know you've um, you've been nominated for several Dora Awards um, including uh, a piece of, of your own called A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf and also for uh, as part of an ensemble in The Ugly One. So right. um, y- let's talk about A Room of One's Own just because it was also staged at Campbell House. It was. Yes, we did it last fall. Um, it's... Uh Patrick Garland, who incidentally directed one of the episodes of The Talking Heads for BBC, adapted Virginia Woolf's essay, A Room of One's Own, into, uh, into a stage production um, that Eileen Atkins first starred in in, in the uh, United Kingdom. And we presented it last year as sort of a site-specific production at the Campbell House. So is, so, this, is this how you got involved with, with John? Uh, yeah, I guess that is how I got involved with John. John came to see me perform um, the Virginia Woolf show and um, got in touch with me, and we'd sort of uh, talked about collaborating in the future. And this summer I was out in D.C. doing a, um, a Shakespeare festival, and uh, he got in touch and he sent me the script. And as soon as I read The Outside Dog, I, I fell in love with it. Like, it really... I, I, Alan Bennett is just... He's, he's a writer that I think any actor would want to to perform his work because it's so full and complex and and each of these monologues has this really sort of dark secret that that runs throughout it but most of the characters speak contrary to it so you know it's it's quite conversational very intimate and yet so dark in many places um your monologue is uh the outside dog tell us about that monologue Without giving too much away. Yeah, without giving too much away. So, um, The Outside Dog is um, about a woman named Marjorie, and she is, uh, she lives in the north of England, and we we sort of meet her as she conversationally tells us about her her life and her husband. And um, we can tell that she has a bit of an obsession with cleaning, and I think that this is the thing that's so wonderful about... um, the way Alan Bennett writes is throughout the monologue, we start to see Marjorie unravel a bit as her husband is brought under suspicion for committing some pretty terrible um, criminal acts. And as the play develops, we see Marjorie crack further and further as she tries to maintain a sense of normalcy in her life. And uh, the monologue we think, is most likely based on a series of murders that were committed in the North of England um, by, a, by a serial killer. And, um, and, and perhaps that Alan Bennett has loosely based the character of Marjorie on, uh, on this serial killer's wife, who, who ended up staying in the home that they shared while he was committing the murders. Mm. And that she was quite stoic and very, quite a, 
quite a cold lady in reaction to these to these um to these murders. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, um how many how much time did you spe- actually spend in Campbell House um during the rehearsal period? We spent about a week. Uh we I guess we loaded the show in on Monday and then we opened the show last night. So, um but we've been rehearsing for about a month. Um, in our rehearsal space mm-hmm. before we moved over. And I think what's amazing about the Campbell House is the different ways you can use it as a theater venue. So when we did A Room of One's Own last year, we, 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 we almost had no set deck at all in the house. We reused the house as it was and, and had the house sort of play itself um, in, our, in our show. Mm-hmm. Whereas our um, incredible designer, Rachel, has uh, transformed each of the rooms that we perform these monologues into, into a totally different space. And I, I was really impressed um, with how she did it. Each one of them seems to have transformed into such a totally different um, venue and evoking such different places in England. Oh, so the play is set in different rooms. It is, yeah. So oh, that's fantastic. It, it, it's, really, it's a really wonderful concept, I think, that John's come up with. And Basically, I think the, the idea is that with each room you go into, you enter somebody's house or somebody's place of work. Mm-hmm. And so each, each of the three different spaces that you'll travel to during the show, um, yeah, are set up in, in different locations. I've seen um, a, a production at Campbell House, but we were all staged in sort of the living room and you know, right. sort of voyeurs of, of whatever was taking place there. So this is, I'm looking forward now to seeing um, the house, you know, being used in a different way. Yeah, it's, it's really remarkable. It's been really neat to see how, um, how Rachel has uh, transformed it into something completely different. And also how she's been able to sort of take the bones of the house and incorporate them into each of the dis- different setups. But say, for example, my house is a house, you know, um, in uh, Yorkshire in the 1980s. And it's, it's a kitchen, and she's transformed the drawing room of uh, the Campbell House into a really authentic... ...mid-80s kitchen. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Sounds fantastic. So um, I, I've seen a bit of uh, the monologue... Um, with Julie Walters. Did you watch this or you just wanted to distance yourself from it? No, I did watch it. Um, I watched it mainly um, for the accent. Um, it's such a specific accent, northern accent, and it's one that I haven't really put my finger on in the past. So um, it, was a really, it becomes a very technical process, um, learning sort of the cadence of of an accent, and Julie Walters is is very famous for for. Uh, I mean, she is from the north of England, but she creates she's created such um, iconic characters from the north. Um, you know, in educating Rita that she she started in the theater and then in the film as well, and then uh, and then the Outside Dog as well. So I, I have watched Julie's um, version of it, and she's remarkable in it, and. Uh, but John and I also had our own ideas about who we thought Marjorie was. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, whereas the, the accent has been a great um, help for us, I think we've interpreted the role a little bit differently than, than uh, Julie Walters did. Mm-hmm. Was that a yeah. challenge at all, trying to uh, sort of in- refresh the role? I guess it, it can be in the way that, you know, especially with a performer of Julie Walters' caliber, I mean when you watch it, something sinks in about what she's done. But I think that when you really start to perform a show and rehearse it, and you can't help but bring your own sensibilities Mm -hmm. to the thoughts and um, your interpretation of it. So I think that the more we did it and the further we got into it, it, I somehow, it seems like a different, it's a different person and it's a different play, I, I feel. And I think that that's, so true, especially when you're, you know, doing monologues, when you're all by yourself, you create such a small, specific world that you're inhabiting that you, you can't sort of allow anything else to creep in there because you have to have such a strong hold on, on the world that you're evoking. Mm-hmm. 
So did John work with you? Um, with because there's four of you in this in this piece. So did he work with you separately or together or how? There's three of us. So it's three Sorry, monologues. Three. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason uh, Gray performs um, playing sandwiches, and uh, Alex Dallas performs a lady of letters. And he works with us separately. Um, they're each very different. They're set um, in different places. And while you can feel links between the, the three of them, um, the, the Talking Heads is actually uh, two different series of six monologues. And so when you perform the Talking Heads, it's really sort of the director's choice as to how they present them. Okay. And so John picked these three monologues, um, and I feel like he found a really interesting link between all of them. But we didn't get to see each other um, until a couple of days ago. Oh. So it's been really, it was really interesting because from first read where you, you know, you all sit around a table with the designers and you read through the monologues from that day, which was, you know, a month ago until two days ago, I hadn't seen anything that the other two had been working on. So it was really great to see how far the, the pieces have come and how truthful and deep both of their characters are. Well, Naomi, thank you so much for joining me today. And how long does the play run? It runs until the 23rd of November, and you can get tickets on Brown Paper Tickets. And you can also look for links on the Campbell House Toronto website. And tickets are $25, correct? They are. Okay. Wonderfully affordable, um, especially since you're going to a venue that is historic and many people haven't been to in the first place. Yeah, so. it's a pretty it's a pretty amazing experience, I think, and um, it's a very intimate space. So the tickets are quite limited. There's only uh, 37 seats per performance. Right. So it's it's good to book in advance and book early. Okay. Naomi, <laughs> thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.